코노미의 천사여 이번에는 우리를 구원할 수 있겠는가? Imagine Nier, Sekiro, and Bayonetta had a baby. You get Stellar Blade. What's up guys? Today I'll be talking about the 32 things we know so far about the game Stellar Blade. We'll be talking about the story, gameplay, characters, and do stick around as I'll also be sharing some issues about the game near the end of this video. So, let's jump into it. This game was previously called Project Eve until they changed the name to Stellar Blade. Honestly, I like the original name Project Eve because Stellar Blade sounds cheesy to me. So the developers are claiming this game to be a triple A game, so it's high budget, high profile, think God of War, Legend of Zelda, Hogwarts Legacy. But personally, I would not consider this game to be up there yet. That would be blasphemy considering that this is the first console game the developer is releasing. Now speaking of the developer, the game is from South Korea from a company called Ship Up Corporation. So if you look at the roster of games they have released, you can tell why or you can tell the inspiration behind why Stellar Blade has this overly exaggerated plot and backstory. You know what I mean? And this game will be a PS5 exclusive. We're not sure if it's a limited time exclusive like the upcoming Final Fantasy 16, where after 6 months of being solely a PlayStation game, they get to be released on other platforms like Steam and Xbox. I hope it's the latter. So the game took a lot of influence from new games such as God of War and Nier Automata. You will see some of those influences in this game like this mini game for boss fights, the useless drone like thing around the character like in Nier, and I would add a little bit of Sekiro or Sekiro I might say which I will discuss later in the gameplay so stick around for that. Now let's talk about the setting of this game. The setting will be a sci-fi post-apocalyptic world very similar to Horizon Zero Dawn and Nier Automata, where the Earth has been taken over by aliens or monsters. Based on the trailer, the player will be arriving at Xion, mankind's last remaining city on Earth where the last people are in deep sleep or in suspended animation. Now let's proceed to the story. So these people in Xion are probably waiting for the day they take back Earth from the enemies. And one of the means they could achieve this is through Project Eve. This is just speculation but Project Eve seems to be an android or robotics project tasked with creating these beautiful fighters with overly exaggerated body parts to fight these monsters. Also, judging from the fact that the word this time is included in the lines of the old man talking about Eve and in the first trailer release as you can see here, it can be assumed that there have been several projects aimed at restoring the Earth like Eve before, but all of them have failed. So Eve and her comrades land on the surface to reclaim Earth, and they cross paths with a survivor named Adam. My question is, why is he named Adam? Adam and Eve? Is there a reason for that? We'll find out. Eve is then led to Adam to the last surviving city, Xion, where she meets the elder of the town, Oracle, and is told many stories. In order to serve her mission to save Earth, Eve develops close relationships with the key members of Xion and contributes to rebuilding the city. Now let's talk about the characters. There are five that we know so far. First one is Eve 06 which was shown in the very first trailer so there are three possibilities as to why we don't see Eve 06 in the latest trailers. One, the developers just scrap her character in favor of Miss Ponytail over here. Two, she arrived first before Eve 07 but then died. And three, she could be an alternate character we could play in the game. So we'll find out when the game releases. Next is Eve 07, the main character. She descended to Earth with the other members of the unit but for some reason, all of them failed and it seems that she was the only one who succeeded in descending. Contrary to her slender appearance, she fights against monsters alone and seems to be some android of some sort as she's very sturdy as she's fine even after being thrown into space, getting sawed by Chainsaw Man here and here, and she's fireproof. And did I mention that she has an interesting plot and backstory that has overly exaggerated physics to them? So that's our main character there. Next is Adam, this guy over here wearing a gas mask. At the time of the first trailer, we thought that this flying drone like thingy is a support robot like in here, but it turns out that's just being controlled by Adam. I'm guessing the drone will have weapons or will act as a support just like in here, otherwise it's going to be useless. They could have just used comms. So Adam asks Eve to help them. I'm guessing he's going to be important in the story. Otherwise, why would they name him Adam? Then we have this lady over here, Lily. She is a girl with the appearance of a teenager and she is circumstantially seen as a companion with Eve and Adam. Next, we have Oracle, a character revealed in the second trailer as an old man in charge of the city of Xion, the last city of mankind. 
most of his body including his head and upper body is mechanized and his body is connected to other machines which is quite eerie. He tells Eve about the time they lost the earth to the natives and asks if he can save them this time. In terms of voiceover, the development team is proceeding of course in their language, Hangul, the language of South Korea. It has been mentioned by the developers that they are getting talent from all over the world but still no details if there will be other voiceover options. But they did hire an impressive cast of voice actors with a lot of experience under their belt. Now let's proceed to the enemies in the game. They actually used the latest 3D scanning technology to design the monsters in this game called the natives. Which is actually weirdly spelled with a colon in the middle of the word. So they are like these monsters from dead space who drove mankind to the brink of extinction. Then we have the alpha natives. While all the other natives have the appearance of monsters, this enemy, a human or another Eve probably, called an alpha native, appears and fights Eve 07. Now let's talk about the game's design. This game is built using Unreal Engine 4. So far, the game is looking pretty impressive in terms of graphics considering that it's being developed by a young studio with no experience in console games. They also use the latest technology in game design and development, think God of War and Horizon Zero Dawn. And they used the largest 3D scanning system in Korea. And they used a facial capture system and they scanned real models to be used in the game. Now we finally get to the gameplay. The game will be semi-open world so it's like God of War where there will be zones for main events like boss battles but the main area or map will be kind of an open world. And in this game deflecting and dodging is rewarded like in Sekiro. So players who successfully do this will be rewarded with a beta and burst gauge. So it's like the system that unlocks various game changing skills so these beta and burst skills are more powerful special attacks like the leaping stab shown in this trailer. And in this game, sorry but I would use the word, there will be souls like challenging bosses to be encountered. So players need precise timing with the parry and dodging and some strategy to beat these boss natives. And based on the trailer, enemies seem to have a similar posture system like Sekiro where every enemy has a posture meter that needs to be taken down before their actual health goes down. By the looks of it, smaller enemies may go down easily by simply raining down attacks, but larger foes, especially bosses, need to be tackled more diligently with perfectly timed deflections. Unique traversal mobility played a huge role in Sekiro, with a grappling hook allowing for more verticality than pass from software games. Thankfully, Project Eve takes a similar approach with traversal by allowing players to scale towering infrastructures by scaling walls, swinging ropes, and hovering. There is even an instance in the latest trailer where Eve is sliding down a narrow tunnel while being pursued by a giant dead space monster. The game also encourages exploration by hiding treasures across the map, though it would be interesting to see whether these treasures are new weapons, new armor, and items, items with buffs, it remains to be seen. And Project Eve shakes things up and hopefully makes things more interesting by introducing various new weapons. The trailers revealed so far only showcase Eve's electrified sword of some kind, though the game's director has confirmed that the game will feature more weapons. Depending upon the nature of these weapons, the feel of deflection and firing can vary, and it would be very interesting to see how unique each one of them actually feels to use. The game will also make use of the dual sense controller haptic feedback, which will allow players to feel the tingling sensation of slicing an enemy's flesh, which is a nice feature but I think it will just go unnoticed when you play the game. And lastly, let's talk about the issues surrounding the game. On the website Ship Up, the studio making the game is still hiring a lot of developers right now, so I'm not sure if that's a good sign. I mean, if this is a AAA game project, shouldn't the manpower be there from day one? I don't know, I'm not so sure. We'll see when the game releases. Secondly, there are concerns that this game is just a copycat of Nier Automata and lacks originality. Not to mention the story is another post-apocalyptic one like Horizon and Nier. And there have been some issues circulating online about the studio harassing a former employee but I won't dive into that topic as there is no concrete news about it yet. Now it's too early to predict whether Stellar Blade's more methodical approach to gameplay will turn out as good as many are hoping it to be. But for now, it seems to be headed in a direction that should attract plenty of Souls-like fans especially Sekiro's. With no Sekiro 2 yet on the horizon and the third year game just started development, Stellar Blade should be on everyone's radar. So that's it guys, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe, it really, really helped me a lot. I had to translate a number of Korean websites to English to get this information. But if you're not yet ready to make that commitment, a simple like or any comment down below will really go a long way for my channel. So thanks again for watching and have a great day.